In this video, I'd like to go over the process for updating your firmware on your Falcon controller. In this case, we have an F16 V4, but the process is identical for the F48. You can tell the current version of the firmware you're running based on the build number. Now on the uh, web UI, you can see the build number here. This happens to be build number one. Uh, you can also see the build number on the OLED screen in the right hand side near the top, just under the, the header bar. So you can check your version there. Now, if there is a newer version of the firmware available, you will get this link at the top here to download the firmware. If you click on this link, uh, what it's going to do is it's actually going to access this GitHub repository, github.com slash dpits slash F16 v4 issues. Uh, this contains both the F16 and the F48 firmware. This is where we'll do the release. If you'd like to know what's included inside the various flavors of the firmware, you can take a look inside this release notes file where I will document the, the various changes that are happening. In this case, it's got build one, two, and three. Build four has got some things in it as well. Build four is not actually released yet, but this I'll fix will be available when release four comes out. It's not a particularly significant fix, and so it's not that urgent. You then have folders here for the, the various flavors of controller. You'll have a firmware file. Now, uh, I will leave multiple versions here. So this is Falcon 16 firmware underscore three, and the three is the build number. And there's also a document here that describes the process that you can go through, but I'm gonna show it to you today. So, so let's go back to the control here. If we click on this link, it will download the firmware. The firmware file is extremely small. It's, it's, a, it's a megabyte or so. And it will put that document into your download folder. Uh, to then apply the firmware, you have two choices and we'll go through both of them. The first one is to upload the firmware to the controller. And the second one is to place the firmware onto an SD card, which you can then place into the controller, reboot the controller, and it will apply the firmware. Now, they both work exactly the same in terms of the, the end result. You can choose which one you wanna do. It actually uploads to the controller so quickly that if you can do over the wire, I would generally just do it over the network and be done with it. Maybe if you're installing lots and lots of them and they're all sitting nearby, an SD card might be easier, but generally uploading is gonna be the easiest. So to do this, we go to the settings page. And on the settings page, uh, we wanna come down to the bottom here to this update firmware link. When we click on the update firmware link, it will take us to a folder. You'll wanna to go to your downloads folder where you just downloaded the firmware to. I just happen to have it here in another folder. We double click on that file, it uploads. Sometimes it takes less than a second. In this case, it's taking a little bit longer, but it doesn't take very long. Once the firmware is uploaded, it'll tell you that it completed and you need to reboot to apply it. If you wait approximately five seconds, the controller will automatically reboot and start applying the firmware. The firmware is applied in four steps. First of all, the two main CPUs on the um, board, and then it will reboot the controller and then it will apply the Wi-Fi chip. And there's, two, uh, there's, there's some code that has to be applied and a bunch of uh, web files that need to be applied to the chip. So it will cycle through this. Uh, the CPU ones apply fairly quickly. Uh, the ESP ones, which is the Wi-Fi chip, they take a little bit longer. The files are a little bit larger and the, uh, uh, the upload speed is a little bit slower. If you try to refresh the controller while this is happening, uh, it won't work and you'll get errors up here in red uh, as it tries to contact the controller and it can't contact it. 
Uh, so yeah, you get timeouts like this. And these things will continue until the controller finishes applying the firmware. When the firmware does get finished getting applied to the controller, uh, the controller will reboot for a third time and it's at that point in time that it will come back online. Generally speaking, the configuration on the controller will stay in place during the upgrade. There may be some releases of the firmware where we need to erase the, uh, the settings on the controller because the internal format of those has changed. So I would always recommend that you back up your configuration before applying the firmware just in case. And so now our controller has come back online. We refresh it and we can see now that it's build three here. And if you look at the OLED screen, you can see that the OLED screen is also showing build three. And that's the process for updating the firmware using the over the network load. To apply your firmware upgrade using an SD card, you will want to insert your SD card into your computer and grab uh, the FL3 file and place it onto the SD card, at which point you can remove the SD card from the computer and place it into the controller. Once you've placed it into the controller to reboot the controller, you hold down the boot button, which is the button immediately to the right of the OLED screen. If you hold that down for three, five seconds, it will count down and it will reboot. Once it reboots, it will detect that there's firmware on the SD card and it will first of all copy the SD card onto the board which is a very similar process to what was happening over the network. Once it's finished, you get the option. You can either just pull the SD card out. If you plan to use that firmware and upgrade multiple cards, I would, I would suggest you do that. However, if you're just uploading a single board, you can press the select button and that will delete the FL3 file so that the next time it boots, it doesn't try and do the firmware upgrade again. And it will then continue with the installation process. Uh, the installation process, just as it was when you uploaded over the network, doesn't require you to interact with the controller at all. Everything will be automatic. If anything does go wrong during the upgrade process, the process is designed to stop at the point that it failed and show you the error that you get. Generally speaking, uh, I would just power cycle the controller and try again. If it still fails, I would re-download the firmware and reapply it or raise an issue with us and, and we'll try to help you out with it. We've been upgrading this for quite some time now and it seems to be very stable. There are some additional uh, processes that we can go through if it really does get stuck for some reason and those things will be documented in the manual, but we'll also help you out if you get into one of those very rare scenarios. And once the install is complete, you can see that this is now build three again. So they're the two ways of upgrading the firmware. Earlier in the video, I mentioned saving or downloading your controller configuration just in case uh, you lose the configuration through the firmware upgrade. Let me quickly touch on how to do that. It's essentially done with this save settings link just here. If you click on the save settings link, it will download onto your machine 
a JSON file which represents your configuration, which you can then load back later using the load settings. This guarantees that you have a copy of all of your critical settings in a file separate from the controller. And should we need to apply it again later, we can upload it. So that's the key point. So that's how to upgrade your firmware on your controller for regardless of whether it's an F16 or an F48, either over the network or using an SD card. Both of them very, very similar processes, just some slight differences at the beginning. And the rest of the process is quite normal. So thanks, guys. Enjoy your new Falcon controllers.